So think about this for a second. In my many consultations with people from all around the world, if I recall correctly, every single one of them has taken at least one probiotic in the past, usually multiple types and rounds. And in addition to that, most have consumed one or more types of fermented foods for extended periods of time. But when you consider that I am the microbiome expert and all of these people come to me with gut problems, while they also suffer from their individual blend of histamine, autoimmune, mental health, and other issues, we need to ask the question, if probiotics are so amazing, then why is anyone still suffering after using them and consuming fermented foods? As I say in my videos, probiotics work for some of the people some of the time, but they are a bad idea in general in those who are dysbiotic, and especially in those with SIBO. Don't you want to try something that works for most of the people most of the time? So let's take a look at some comments from my YouTube channel from more people I have other comments in previous videos, who had bad experiences with probiotics and or fermented foods. If you're new, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on Instagram and Facebook as The Microbiome Expert. We start with a comment from my video, are probiotics and fermented foods the holy grail? Think again. Here the comment states, quote, I chose to take a super strength probiotic a friend recommended. Its side effects put my life in danger and I'm still recovering two months after. Very concerning. You probably didn't know this, but there are many papers, these and more, on the dangers of lactobacillus probiotics. Another states, quote, this yogurt, referring to my video on the L. Reuteri yogurt fad, gave me bad anxiety and agitation. It is more than die-off. Yes, it is more than die-off. For some perspective on the effects on brain function, you can watch my videos on brain fog, anxiety, and depression. And this comment is from my video entitled, Lactobacillus, a dumb idea in those who are dysbiotic. The comment states, quote, could this be why I initially react very well to VSL3 slash visbiome, but then get worse after a few days? Meaning possibly the bifidobacterium makes me well initially, but then the lactopart worse. You have to realize that the bacteria you truly need to increase in the dysbiotic gut are not lactate producers, but butyrate producers. I think I do a good job of explaining this in my videos. If the probiotics industry could put butyrate producers into a product onto the shelf, trust me, they would do it in a heartbeat. But they can't, because these amazing health-promoting bacteria are among many things oxygen sensitive, and wouldn't survive manufacturing, transport, and storage. Stop wasting your money. Another video on probiotics I have. Try something more intelligent. I never recommend probiotics, and my success rate is incredible, especially when you consider I'm working with some quite unwell people who have already been to see on average 10 other practitioners to no avail. This next quote comes from my video why don't I have a high histamine protocol? It states, quote, I'm doing a lot better since I got off fermented foods at your advice. In my video, probiotics and fermented foods not helping, you're not alone, follow the data, not the hype. And in all my videos, I present you with over 1,000 scientific references stating my case. You're welcome to get and read every one of them if you'd like. Or, make your life easier and just watch my videos. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recommend to friends and family. Also, if you're feeling extra generous, hit the super thanks below. Our last quote states, people are chomping down on the kimchi and guzzling kombucha and wondering why they're getting all these high histamine issues. I used to eat kimchi with every meal and wondered why my face and eyes were swelling up took a while to realize that these fermented foods were extremely high in histamine and I had developed an intolerance. Yes, and this person is not alone. I have many high histamine conversations during my consultations. You have to understand why you are high histamine. Why can't you eat spinach or tomatoes, oranges, or drink alcohol while the rest of us can? 
is because your immune system is hypervigilant. So watch my video, Stop the Probiotic and Fermented Food Madness, as this person did to understand the biochemistry behind what's going on inside your body by watching my videos on autoimmune disease, among other things. And why is the immune system hypervigilant? Because of the dysbiosis in the gut. So not only is the abundance of bad actors driving inflammation while they are in charge of the microbiome, but they are also driving excess biogenic amine production, histamine being the best known. Let's take a quote from this 2024 paper which states, quote, the common microbes that produce biogenic amines through decarboxylation of amino acids include lactobacillus, dominant in dysbiosis, leuconostoc, lactococcus, enterobacter, a known opportunistic pathogen, escherichia, that's where E. coli comes from, enterococcus, highly pathogenic bad guys as well, pediococcus, pseudomonas, a known opportunistic pathogen as well, Streptococcus, well-known genus of many opportunistic pathogens like strep throat. Staphylococcus, known pathogens like staph infection. Shigella, pathogen. Salmonella, as in salmonella, and bacillus species. Lactobacillus species are known to be mainly responsible for histamine, which you know well, tyramine, as in food poisoning, and putrescine, as in putrid, rotting flesh, production in foods while Enterobacteriaceae and Enterococcus species are known to contribute to the production of putrescine, cadaverine, as in cadaver, same idea as putrescine, and tyramine in foods. Not listed here is K. pneumoniae, which is a prolific histamine producer as well. These are the opportunistic pathogens I talk about in all of my videos. These bad actors dominate the dysbiotic microbiome, along with lactobacillus, Watch my videos. So not only are they driving inflammation, they are producing histamine and other biogenic amines. So why in the world would you want to add more lactobacillus to this equation? It makes no sense. Now, if you've taken probiotics at some point and it helped you, I believe you. I hear that. It happens. But what is the long-term outcome? There are usually two things I hear. One, someone goes immediately downhill on probiotics or fermented foods. Or two, someone does better for a period of time and then goes downhill. This is also true for the low FODMAPs diet and the carnivore diet. What we're looking for is a healthy, lasting solution so you can return to living a normal life. For me, when I was first diagnosed with Crohn's, see my videos, the various probiotics I tried or neither the fermented food did nothing for me in one direction or the other. But I manage my Crohn's using the principles I teach and my philosophy in my protocols and consultations. As the former director of medical education for a microbiome company, and now with my own platform, I have helped legions of people from around the world. I invite you to be one of them. I also want to hear from you. Feel free to share your experience with probiotics and or fermented foods in the comments. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, somewhere around here, you can go to my website where you can schedule a consultation with me. You can also view the protocols. And here, you can watch the next video.